Welcome to the next section of my review of the For Britain Manifesto of 2020. And today I've got my manifesto here again. Here it is. Have a read. Best manifesto in the country by far, I promise you. Uh, and today I'm going to cover animal welfare. And as you may know, this is something that is very close to my heart. I started out, my very first political issue actually that I cared about, and I was a young yeah, 10 or 11 at the time it was the first political issue I ever cared about and this was in the 80s when there was uh, a, a lot of discussion about testing on animals, testing cosmetics on animals for example uh, and some of the biggest in the 80s, some of the biggest cosmetics producers in the world simultaneously stopped testing on animals and yet all these years later they remain the biggest cosmetics companies in the world and that tells me that all that suffering of animals was completely unnecessary so as with the previous uh, videos i'm going to read through the uh read through the manifesto uh and uh, offer some comments on it so let's start for britain cares deeply about all life within this country and we believe that as an animal loving nation we have fallen foul in recent years and have allowed unnecessary and grotesque cruelty to be committed against animal life. We most certainly have uh, and among that uh, are probably front and centre on that is religious slaughter and as you know for Britain takes this matter very very seriously this again is another example of extreme cruelty to animals that is completely unnecessary manifesto goes on for Britain is very concerned for example about the proliferation of religious unstunned slaughter of farm animals in contravention to animal protection laws uh, those animal protection laws are the uh, requirement, the legal requirement, that animals be stunned to unconsciousness prior to slaughter. Uh, those laws have a religious exemption, which in my mind makes them completely uh, toothless. What is the point of them if you allow the people who want to do it in the name of religion to carry on doing it? Halal slaughter, i.e. unstunned slaughter in accordance with Islamic ritual, is now served routinely in British schools, hospitals, government buildings and sporting venues. Kosher meat from animals slaughtered in accordance with Jewish tradition also involves cutting the throat of a conscious animal. Uh, British law requires animals to be stunned to unconsciousness prior to slaughter, but allows for a religious exemption. Now, I'm often asked uh, about kosher versus halal. I'm quite clear, and the manifesto is quite clear, any unstunned slaughter should be prohibited. But there is a huge difference between kosher and halal in the demand for it. First of all, uh, Muslims vastly outnumber Jews in this country and the kosher market is tiny in comparison to the halal market. But even more significantly than that, kosher is not imposed upon us all. You will not find kosher being uh, served exclusively in schools, uh, in hospitals, sporting venues, etc, etc, etc. Kosher is not imposed on the wider public. Halal is. And that, by the way, is crucial, a crucial difference. There's also the issue of halal certification. And what that basically means, it's probably uh, obvious, but jihadi groups, some of them are jihadi groups, uh, or at least ideological jihad groups, I suspect some involved in terrorism as well, uh, but Islamist, to be to give them the kindest, most moderate name I can give them, Islamist groups provide certification to major companies uh, saying that they are halal, that they can be eaten by Muslims. Now, huge companies are paying out a fortune to these shady groups to certify their products halal because they want to tap in to the Muslim market. Where is that money going? None of this applies to kosher either. So for those of you who are going to shout kosher at me, I'm explaining now why we are more emphasis is placed on halal than kosher. Here's one of the reasons. Halal certification is now commonplace and is often applied to non-meat products. And that's another crucial point. When we talk about kosher, we're talking about meat, unstunned slaughter. When we talk about halal, we're talking about putting labels on absolutely all kinds of food produce uh, to say that Muslims can eat it. 
But why? You know, it, it, it's clearly, clearly a certification money raising racket. Certification that a product is permissible to Muslims is obtained by major companies from various Islamic advoc advocacy groups on payment of a fee slash tax. And we have little insight into how that money is used. This is crucial. It's so, so, so important. We go on. For Britain believes that all unnecessary suffering of animals should be legally prevented. We understand the natural order of things and that, of course, animals prey on each other in nature. However, unnecessary entrapment, pain, suffering caused by humans should be brought to an end and respect for animals promoted. For Britain also understands that meat is a staple of the British diet and that farming is the backbone of food production. We therefore seek to reform farming, working with British farmers towards a reprioritization of organic and natural farming methods and an end to factory farming. I actually believe that most farmers in this country would like to see us go in that direction. A lot of this, and I'm going to be doing a book review this week, uh, of how in the 90s regulation from the European Union destroyed small business and small farming and created, in effect, factory farming. I'll cover that uh, later this week, but I do believe that, factory, uh, that farmers will be happily happy to go along with this, happy to work with us and I make this appeal to farming groups. Uh, we, are, we are going to be getting in touch with you over the coming weeks. If any uh, farmers are watching this, do get in touch. Anne-Marie.Waters at ForBritain.UK. If you're a farmer who's concerned about the state of farming, uh, the state of animal welfare in regards to farming, please do give us a shout. We really do want to hear from you and, and also if you have concerns about halal, do get in touch. Finally, experimentation on animals, which is often entirely unnecessary, should be severely restricted and only permitted when it can be shown that animal suffering will be minimised and that the experimentation is needed for tightly regulated medical reasons. Now, um, this uh, I've had some people write to me about this expressing some concern about medical experimentation on animals. I do understand that a lot of it is unnecessary and it's simply to generate money for certain university departments or, or scientific uh, research um, and actually uh, animals are being bred for experiments which we've already got the answers to uh, but it's just to keep to keep generating money this needs to be looked at very very carefully um, but to rule out all animal experimentation at this point i think would be a mistake but we certainly need major, major reform and we need to be sure that animals are not being bred into existence simply to be tortured. To answer a question about science or psychology that we already know the answer to. Animals should not be subjected to experiments for the purposes of commercial gain or the production of cosmetics or household products. Once again, as we discovered in the 80s, uh, cosmetics, major cosmetics companies stopped testing on animals and their revenue did not go down. In fact, in many cases, it went up. So let's go through the list. For Britain will end all on stunned slaughter without exception. Hold a public public inquiry into the certification of halal products. We want to know where this money is going. I know where it's going, uh, but the evidence is thin on the ground, as is so often the case. Reform the dairy industry that, so that cattle can roam freely as much as possible and have access to their calves. Actively protect greenfield sites and pr promote the protection of wildlife. Incentivize free range egg production so that the caging of hens is phased out in the near future. End testing on animals for cosmetics or other commercial non-medical products. Ban the export of animals from the UK. Now this one I know has a lot of public support. We know that animals undertake, are forced to undertake, hours and hours and hours of excruciatingly painful journeys to reach abattoirs across Europe, for example. I have never understood why it is that the animal can't be slaughtered close to its uh, environment where it, where it is being uh, raised and then shipped abroad. I don't understand this. There's no reason for it. It must change. These animals are uh, 
crying out. This is a horrific, horrific, torturous end for these animals. And they've done nothing, nothing to deserve this. It is horrifically cruel and it must stop. Ban the production of veal. And this one's a little bit controversial and I understand uh, that there may be a little bit of drawback on that one. Veal crates are already banned. And to, to explain to you what veal is, uh, veal is, a, is overwhelmingly the meat from the calf which is taken from the dairy cow. Now the dairy cow must be, like humans, must be pregnant to produce milk. And dairy cows are therefore essentially always pregnant or pregnant uh, again and again and again to, to, to keep them uh, producing milk. The calf she produces is taken away uh, and until the veal crates were banned in Europe, uh, placed into a tiny crate in which the animal can't turn around or move uh, and it spends its short life imprisoned in this tiny crate. Uh, it, it has an effect on the meat. It makes the meat more tender that this poor animal isn't able to move. Um, it's horrifically cruel. Now, as well as the crates themselves, there is no need for this. There are ways, if we just tried to find them, and this is where I'm asking farmers for help, if we try to find ways that we can still milk cows without taking her calf and torturing it to death in this way. And, I, and you may think my language is inflammatory, but it isn't. That is exactly what is happening. We must stop this excessively cruel and completely unnecessary meat production. Support current proposals to end the import of four products to the United Kingdom. Introduce strict criminal penalties, including deportation for non-British citizens, for those found guilty of the above or other severe abuses of animals. Ban those found guilty of animal cruelty, abuse, abuse or neglect from animal ownership for life. Ban the use of animals in circuses or other forms of entertainment with which the animal is subjected to pain or suffering. Fully investigate badger culling with the aim of bringing it to an end. You know, a lot of people uh, don't consider animal welfare to be uh, an important issue. I think it is an absolutely vital issue because it reminds us, or should remind us, of our humanity. Human beings are the most powerful animal on this planet. Uh, by virtue of our intelligence, which is both a blessing and a curse in many respects. Um, but by virtue of our intelligence, we do have extreme and supreme power on this planet. And how we treat the creatures, the living sentient creatures beneath us, demonstrates who and what we are as human beings. And I think that is very important. We hold... A, the whip hand over animals and how we decide to treat them determines our compassion, our mercy, our civilization, who we are as human beings. I want us to be a power that expresses mercy and compassion and not with indifference uh, I I imposes grotesque, unnecessary suffering upon sentient creatures and I know that the majority of decent British people agree. If you agree, get on board with For Britain. This is the most comprehensive animal welfare policy that has ever been put together in this country. If you care about animals, and I know millions of you do, For Britain is it. We are your only option. We're serious about this. It matters. Join us.